welcome back to the Gachar Temple. Glad you're here as always. Do like and subscribe. Please tell a friend. And you can donate below if you feel led to do so. Uh, you can uh, go into the description and uh, leave a tip. Plant your corner! Whatever you want to do. Uh, leave a tip and uh, buy me a pizza. It's up to you. I hope you like today's video of guitarist Michael Schenka. It was 
not the, really the shape wasn't important. It just, or maybe it turned in uh, subconsciously. I maybe uh, it was part of the whole package. I'm not sure, but basically it was an accident. The scorpions we, we played. Um, uh, I, I was breaking a string and. It was lead break was coming up, so we swapped guitars quickly. My brother and I, he was already playing a V, and, and so I ended up with it. You know, it was the combination between um, the 50 watt Marshall and, and, and that guitar. And also, I guess maybe, you know, like I've seen Leslie West, he was playing one of my favorite lead breaks that, you know, uh, uh, the theme of an imaginary Western. And that I. I, I, he probably didn't even play the V, but I had kind of pictures of him with a V, and so I, I maybe I, I assumed that's what he was using. So I, I just ended up with, with that guitar, and, and there was once you get used to that shape, you know, I find it awkward to play like that, and so I just got used to it, basically. You know, my brother, he always got, my, got me my gigs, you know, like when I was 11, he, he said like, Michael, I have a band for you, you know, if you're interested. And that was the first band I joined uh, when I was 11. I actually, by the way, I played my first concert with the Scorpions when I was 11. And uh, then the second band he found me when I was 13 called Cry or Cry Express. And that was the youngest band in Germany at the time. And then uh, he said like, I have a great singer for you. I always had my eye on this guy. You know, I want you to, to you know, I want to introduce you to, uh, to him, and, and maybe you're interested in making a band with him. And that was Klaus Meiner. And so we got together, and then there, he had a drummer from his old band, and I took my bass player from my band, and so we started the band called Copernicus. And I was about 15, 14 and a half, almost 15 years maybe. And so. Um, just maybe a few months later, uh, the Scorpions didn't have their singer. We were rehearsing right next to each other. And they were waiting for the, for the singer and for the guitarist, and they didn't make it, so they were listening to us rehearsing. And that's when they decided, you know, they, they wanted to, to approach um, Klaus Meiner and myself to, to join the Scorpions, and we did. You know, this, my job is my hobby. Basically, and I, I love to be creative 24 hours a day if possible. I, that's how I enjoy life, you know, just always trying to create something. <laughs> so I hate being bored, by the way. I don't think anybody likes that, but I, I have my, I don't just, you know, do this all day long, but I, you know, very early in life, I, I understood that it was important when you get up in the morning to do the two most important things first, you know, whatever those are. And the rest of the day is whatever. And so that way, that way I always take care of the most important things and that's uh, important. Thing.
second album, which was phenomenal, my first album with UFO. That when that led to uh, force it to no uh, heavy patting, uh, lights out, um, uh, obsession, and then strangers in the night, which was a live album in '79. And so I did a total of six albums at that point, from 72 or 74 until 79. <laughs> Then I kind of briefly went back to the Scorpions, um, did the Love Tribe album with them, and then decided to go my own way. And I actually, MSG, I created MSG here for peace uh, of mind, I mean like for um, freedom of expression, freedom of doing things when I wanted to do them, how I wanted to do them, um, develop all the visions that were coming out, uh, uh, you know, I did a lot of different types of albums. Uh, um, lots of musicians in the band. Uh, but basically, it was like no pressure. MSG was just for me, to, for me musically, to have total freedom to do whatever I want. And um, so I started that in 1980, <coughs> and uh, um, kind of went through a bunch of musicians uh, from Aerosmith rhythm section. To Billy Sheehan with uh, Danny Kamasi. Um, at some point, I almost ended up doing something with um, Getty Lee and uh, Neil Pearl from Rush. And then um, eventually, we uh, found uh, Simon Phillips from Mo Foster. And then that was basically the beginning of, of MSG in 1980. Did the first album, Michael Schenker Group. And uh, <coughs> From there on, we went. Um, we actually went on tour with Cozy Powell and Chris Glenn and Paul Raymond. They joined f uh, as a live tour, uh, as a live, um, you know, for the live concerts. And then from there, we went to studio and did the uh, uh, next MSG album, um, titled MSG, with Cozy Powell, Paul Raymond, Gary Barr, and Chris Glenn and myself. And at the same time, we went to Japan and did uh, um, recorded live at the Budokan. I thought it was the greatest guitar in the world. But when I was 16 years old and I played with the Scorpions and my brother was playing the rhythm guitar, I was playing the lead guitar and I was playing a Les Paul, he was playing this guitar. So when, his, when I brought a string, we had to swap very quick. So my brother had to give me his Flying V to, so we, we, we were able to continue. And by that time, I found out that this guitar sounded really good for me, for my personal taste. The whole hat came off, I think, actually twice because I smashed the guitar twice. 
And when I smashed the guitar twice, this error came off plus that again. So I don't know how many times it has been broken, but every time I go back, it played better than the error. This is the plectrum I've been using for the past two years. It's hard, heavy. I'm not playing it that way for a start. But unfortunately, they can't do it up and down, which gives you the speed if you need it. Well, what I'm doing is I put my whatever this part is called, I put that on the strings as. Uh, if you do it too much, it goes like... If you don't do it at all, it goes like that. If you just put it in the right position, it goes like... So if you hear a clean sound, I'm taking it off. Well, instead of like looking into a book where it says you should play this and this and this, I think it's much more original if you... Just mess with, well, you know, just go all over the place. And then, if you're lucky, you find a chord. I just mess around and go like, oh, that's a good chord. And I record it, and then I just stick to this chord. And there's the video. I hope you liked it. I hope you will come back and see us. The great Michael Schenker. I'll tell you, he was a big hero of mine way back then. Way back when in the days of old. But nevertheless, this guy is a great songwriter. This man can write a good rock song. I got silver flavor, please. Thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety filling up every space, no privacy uh, And silently it could build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn no closure, moving closer No exposure, I just wanna be a loner